Video game tutorials are important spaces where you learn the basics at the start of a game. It is by definition the easiest part of the game, and usually pretty forgiving. But if you ignore a tutorial's instructions or even defy them, you can end up doing something so unbelievably stupid that you fail these most basic of levels, and sometimes earn yourself a particularly sarcastic game over. Consider these seven embarrassing ways you failed the tutorial. Beware spoilers for the following games. Train of time, Faith. Yeah, I know you hate it, but that fall took you out of commission for a while. And now you're back, you gotta keep sharp, especially in this city. Check out these new training grounds, pretty slick, huh? So let's not run around, duty, so get to her and just go with the flow, okay? Mirror's Edge is a first-person action-adventure platform game, and if you thought that combination of words is probably a recipe for nausea, you'd be right. Thank God I'm not playing this in VR. <laughs> Before you were let loose onto the rooftops on your own as Faith Connors, you had to learn the parkour basics by following your fellow runner Celeste through some basic training exercises. Hi Faith, welcome back. I don't think we'll be seeing you so soon. Each exercise gets progressively harder, from jumping over a fence, uh. to wall running, to jumping onto a wall, turning on the spot, and then leaping off to grab another ledge. <laughs> oh god, I feel sick again. However, while these exercises require some level of precision and timing, there is one part of the tutorial that is pretty simple. In the combat training section, once you disarm Celeste of the handgun she's holding, the game tells you how to fire a weapon, with the specific and very clear instruction, but don't hit Celeste. Okay, but what if? Those curious or stupid enough to try immediately fail and are thrown back to before you disarmed her, forcing you to do it all over again. You better be more careful next time. Oh wow, either the hitboxes in this game are huge, or the sights on this gun are really off. I'm pretty sure that missed. What did she die of? Tinnitus? FTL Faster Than Light is a low-pressure resource management sim, and by low-pressure we mean you'll be constantly fighting for survival in the low-pressure vacuum of deep space, while a thousand things threaten to go wrong and kill your whole crew. Keeping everybody's eyeballs in requires mastery of FTL's many systems, which is why there's a sensible and straightforward tutorial when you start the game that walks you through the basics like repairing damaged bits of the ship, or rerouting available power to the ship's various subsystems. It's a game that respects your intelligence and expects that you will pay attention to the on-screen prompts. And perhaps that's why developer Subset Games thought it would be absolutely fine to leave it so that even during the tutorial, every system on the ship could be tinkered with. Because, you know, why would you, a responsible first-time space captain, go randomly clicking all these buttons when you have no idea what they do yet? For instance, the game offers no encouragement or good reason to click this button, which looks like it turns off all the oxygen in the ship? Hmm. Still, good to know where the suffocate crew button is. That freedom to mess with all the controls means there are plenty of ways you can accidentally get a game over before FTL has even begun. For instance, accidentally pressing the hotkey to open all doors and airlocks when the game is trying to teach you how to safely deal with a fire aboard by opening just one hatch, and every time you fail, you get the same brilliantly sassy warning that if this is what happens in the tutorial, you may not be cut out for a game about surviving in space. 
Yes, game, but before you jump to criticize, answer me this. Do you see any fire aboard? No. It's even possible to have your entire spaceship destroyed by the sarcastically weak source tutorial enemy. This dinky rival craft is here to teach you the basics of firing lasers and missiles, targeting enemy systems to overpower your foes in the most efficient way possible. And to lose it, you would have to deliberately turn off your own shields, then wait a good long time for this comically feeble tutorial enemy to slowly chip away at your hull one hit point at a time. Okay, now admittedly there's a small amount of fire. Good morning! vault calling! vault -Tec? Remind me again. Why, we're about you, ma'am. And helping secure your future. You see, vault is the foremost builder of state-of-the-art underground fallout shelters. In the opening tutorial of Fallout 4, you have an idyllic life with your spouse, baby boy Sean, and a helpful house robot that says the word calm like it's trying to swallow a whole boiled egg. Mom. Sean has been changed, but he absolutely refuses to calm down. No one British says that word like that, Bethesda. Not even our robots. In this suburban home, you choose what you look like in your bathroom mirror, have a vault representative knock on your door to help you choose your player stats, and watch TV in your living room to hear about the devastating nuclear attack that is hitting the USA and is about to reach you. Sounds of explosions. We're uh, trying to get confirmation. Ah, cool, so just an average Saturday then. It's at this point in the tutorial that your character suggests something very sensible, and that is to get to the bomb-proof vault that you're mercifully eligible for. We need to get to the vault. Now! Even when you're outside, every tannoy system out there is telling you to head to the vault. If you are registered, evacuate to Vault 111 immediately. Your neighbours are running for it, and every soldier is guiding the way, eagerly waving you in the right direction. So what happens if you decide to ignore all of them and instead go in totally the opposite direction? Yeah, don't worry, I know, the Red Rocket truck stop is just down here, I want to grab some Blamco mac and cheese to take to the vault. Ah. Predictably, if you don't listen to the game and instead try to explore the pre-nuked state of Massachusetts, it quickly becomes... nuked. Even worse, if you defy the game in this way, the bomb drops much faster than if you'd have just gone to the vault like everyone had told you to. In other words, not only do you doom yourself, but also your family and all your fleeing neighbours because you wanted to see what would happen. Still, at least I won't have to microwave that mac and cheese. My name is Senior Grill Instructor Dwight T. Barnes. The first and last words I want to hear out of your stinking holes is, Sir, do I make myself clear? Sir, yes, sir! Half-Life expansion game Opposing Force introduces you to a fresh perspective on the dramatic events of Half-Life 1, but not before introducing you to Dwight T. Barnes, a furious drill instructor who loves yelling almost as much as he loves pretending he got a reply to his questions. What's your name, dirtbag? Sound off like you got a pair! Corporal Shepard, huh? Looks more like Corporal Dog Meat to me! Seriously, this dude can't get enough. Where are you from, soldier? Texas? Holy cow! Dwight quickly sends you packing off to the game's boot camp to prepare you for battle against the invading extra dimensional Zen forces, first encountered in the Half Life main game. One, two, three, four! This introduction to Opposing Forces gameplay is framed as routine training exercises, like obstacle courses... Get your ass down that hill! Scale that wall! Hurry it up! My dear sweet grandmother moves faster than you, dirtbag! Or a shooting range... Or being shot on purpose to demonstrate the strength of your armour. Um, is it too late to volunteer to be the guy in the army who plays the trumpet? 
Make it through these training exercises and you'll find yourself being directed in the subtle craft of long-range combat by none other than Barnes himself, who walks you through the basics of eliminating distant targets. In this exercise, you will be firing at targets both moving and stationary at medium, long and extreme ranges. The tutorial will certainly make you much better at sniping. Not bad, not bad at all, soldier. But sadly, it doesn't cover weapon safety, which you'll quickly realize is an oversight should you get a little careless while celebrating your brilliant performance. I'm finished with you, soldier. Proceed to the next area and report to the next drill instructor. Yes, should you accidentally, or otherwise, decide to apply your new munitions expertise to your drill instructor, the game stops, you fail the tutorial, and a brief message informs you that rather than having exciting fights with extra-dimensional beings, you are now instead awaiting court-martial. Which on the one hand, fair enough, but on the other, how about a court-martial for whoever designed these training exercises? Getting shot on purpose was one thing, but whatever this is cannot be protocol. I'm just saying, if the trumpet is taken, I'm also a dab hand at the fife. In Zone Zero of 2008 indie game Off, you are met by The Judge, a rather friendly feline who looks like the Cheshire Cat got trapped in a Super NES. As well as making a very pleasant purring sound when you talk to him, he wants to help you through the game. And seeing as the character you're controlling, the batter, has a very sacred mission, The Judge offers to teach you about the rules of combat. In this training, the judge teaches you about the two types of combat. First is attack, which lets you manually fight, and the second is auto, where the game plays for you just in case turn-based combat brings you out in hives. However, the judge specifically asks you not to select the auto function in this training as it would definitely kill him dead. And whilst most sensible people will follow these instructions, some people might still be curious or simply press the wrong button, at which point this happens. Yes, like a cat angrily chastising its owner for not immediately scritching under its chin when requested, the judge angrily chastises you for choosing the auto option. However, at this point it is too late to do anything as the computer continues to attack for you. Yet the judge continues to tell you off as you helplessly watch the batter wail on him. Eventually you smack all the judge's health points out of him, at which point he calls you an imbecile like all cats wish they could, dies and hits you back with a game over screen. Oh don't be so dramatic, you've got 8 lives left. Do not attempt to touch any other controls in your accelerator. In order to conclude the test, you need to accelerate to maximum velocity. Ready? Countdown to acceleration. Three, two, one, accelerate. 1999 space sim X Beyond the Frontier puts you behind the nuanced controls of an interplanetary craft built for anything from long haul trading to intense ship to ship combat. Three, two, one, launch. Launch completed. In other words, this is one of those games where it's actually really crucial to pay attention to the tutorial at the start, if you don't want to spend the whole game drifting uselessly in space like Elon Musk's Tesla. This craft is equipped with a three-axis control device. This allows you to steer the craft up, down, sideways, and to rotate it counterclockwise and clockwise. So it would, we all agree, be the height of folly to circumvent the tutorial by pressing all the buttons until you find out which one fires the weapons, then training those weapons on the mothership administering that tutorial. Run to gauge the engine propulsion capacity. Mission control here. Stick to the standard procedures, please. Wrong maneuver, pilot. Please read your prototype test procedures manual. Continue to misbehave and mission control will get increasingly terse, eventually threatening you with reassignment. Caution. Continue doing that and you'll be manning a radar station in downtown Alaska by the end of the day. 
But unfortunately, by this point, you, the player, will have discovered it's actually 100% more fun to wind up the mothership in this fashion than it is to practice nose down and counterclockwise rolls. So. Time's up, pilot. It's time to proceed. I hope you have the time to accustom yourself to the control. That's it. I'm not even calling you a pilot. I'm signing your transfer orders as I speak. Just remember to pack your warm clothes. All stations aboard. That's right, it's the end of the game before you've even begun. Well, not quite, the game doesn't actually quit to the menu straight away. Instead, it lets you float around for a bit while extremely sad music plays, giving you time to reflect on your terrible misdeeds and start looking at apartments to rent in downtown Alaska. Harsh. Okay, compromise. How about I shoot the mothership while also practicing counterclockwise rolls? That's it. I'm not even calling you a pilot. I'm signing your transfer orders as I speak. Killjoy. Oh, Marshal. If we do this, we do it my way. Quietly. Calmly. You got it? Fine. Hudson on the door. Watch our backs. Don't let any of these people get in. Rookie? On me. Most tutorials tell you that if you push the button, you do the thing. But what if you do... nothing? Far Cry answered this very question when you went to arrest cult leader Joseph Seed right at the start of the game. Here you can ignore the button prompt to press A to arrest the father and the US Marshal ordering you to do so. Rook, put the cuffs on him. Instead, you just stand there doing absolutely nothing for a full 90 seconds as Joseph stares into your soul and tells you to leave, all while you defy the first button prompt on screen that isn't push left stick to walk. Put down your gun. Take your friends and walk away. We have to wonder what your fellow officers think is going on as you stand there doing nothing for a minute and a half. Stage fright, presumably? Or wondering if you left the oven on? Eventually, despite the US Marshal's best efforts to remind you to do your job, the sheriff calls off the whole arrest, i.e. your entire reason for being there. We're leaving, Rook. This ends the game, and you sit there watching the credits, having done nothing but walk forwards. I will have you all arrested. So be it. Although, to be honest, while this is an utter failure at following the tutorial, it is a happier ending than the game's actual ending. You. So those were some of the ways you crashed out of the tutorial before the game had even begun. Can you think of any more examples? Let us know in the comments if so. And if you enjoyed this list video, then why don't you check out some of the other stuff that we do on Outside Extra. For example, our tabletop series, Blades in the Dark, where we play the excellent uh, crime sim Blades in the Dark with our friends from Outside Xbox and the incredible Johnny Chiodini. We think if you like these videos, then you will probably enjoy it. So why not check it out? All right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.